Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about Laplace transforms and, in particular, why they should be important to us when designing control systems. Before we get into how to perform a Laplace transform, I want to quickly talk about why they are so amazing. First, we start with a differential equation in the time domain. The integral of this could be extremely nasty and take forever to solve, so we will do the following. Transform our function using the Laplace transform, solve algebraically, thus completely eliminating the need for our former difficult integral that I mentioned. Then, once solved, we can use an inverse Laplace transform and get our answer back into the time domain. So, we will get the same answer if we were to solve the whole problem in the time domain, however, we will be able to solve it algebraically and save ourselves time and a major headache. Now that we have a rough understanding of why we need Laplace transforms, let's talk more about how they work and how to use them. Laplace transforms are linear operators that essentially allow us to transform a time function, so our input is time, to a function with a complex variable. We typically use s as our complex variable. So s is a complex number which is equal to sigma plus omega i. Sigma and omega are any real numbers and i is the imaginary portion. But what does sigma and omega even mean? Well, sigma essentially tells us how fast the amplitude will change. Think of this as the height of a wave in the ocean, and the omega portion of s determines the frequency at which our function oscillates, so basically how often the wave of the ocean will hit you if you were standing in place. Therefore, as a whole, the s term tells us how stable our function is. We will talk more about stability in future videos, this is just to give you a rough idea. Essentially, Laplace transforms are a great way of solving ordinary differential equations. Laplace transforms essentially tell us what sinusoid and exponents a given function is constructed of, and the main reason this is done in control systems is to eliminate the need of nasty integrals when the time functions get more complex. Because we as humans are smart, there are Laplace transform tables developed to easily allow us to solve the Laplace transforms. Even though we do have tables of many common transforms, it is essential that we understand how they are derived. The following is the general formula for taking the Laplace transform of a given time function. As you can see here, all we do is take the integral from zero time to infinite time and multiply our time function by Euler's constant to the power of negative s, remember that is our complex variable, times t. The purpose of converting to the complex domain as we stated earlier is so that we can solve the problem algebraically and then convert back to the time domain. This just makes our lives so much easier in solving these types of problems. Let's quickly talk about the Laplace transform of a general time function. Basically, we're taking the integral with respect to time, and we have two time terms. So we are going to need to use integration by parts. Using the acronym LAIT, logarithm integral algebraic trig exponent, we know that our exponents are usually going to be our v term, and therefore our time function will be our u. So, we take the derivative of u and the integral of the v term. Now, we can apply this to our integration by parts and we get this. The first term here is 0 as e to the power of negative s times t will go to 0 as time goes to infinity. The second term will go to our function at time 0 as the Euler portion will approach 1 at that time 0. Applying the bounds of our integral for time and removing the constant negative 1 over s from the integral on the right, we get the following and we are complete. Let's notice something. We are returned the Laplace transform of our original function's derivative. We will talk about this more in future videos on what this particularly means. Therefore, the total Laplace of a general time function is the following. Thank you for checking out the video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.